I also want to focus on this ride, on what I call the, uh, the eternal communications triangle. Uh, triangles are fascinating things, aren't they? Three points, three sides, all the angles add up. To the same number every time. But the uh, communications triangle for me is my uh, sat-nav, the heart of the system, my phone and my Scala Rider QZ. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience of the first eight weeks of those on the RT and a little bit about my uh, profession as well uh, without going into too much detail and boring you but one of the things I do is I train people in the management of uh, complex projects and in, if any of you've had an experience in project management you'll know there's a lot of data around a lot of spreadsheets and Excel and PowerPoint slides and all kinds of information, soft information, hard information, customer feedback, how your customers feel in relationships and all that kind of stuff. And it's a project, and a project is a chunk of change. A project takes you to somewhere where you aren't at the moment. It takes you through a set of necessary steps. And in, in the same way, maybe in a slightly different way, but in a parallel, uh, the motorbike's a project as well. The motorbike's going to take you somewhere where you want to go. And we need feedback, and feedback enables us to learn, feedback enables us to make decisions. So on the bike, clearly there's lots of data. There's the engine temperature, there's how fast we're going, there's how much fuel you've got in the tank. On your, uh, your GPS, there's the uh, time to the next turn and so forth. What are, your, what are your oil levels like? And what we need to do in any uh, situation like that with a lot of data around, step number one is to collect the data, step number two is to synthesise it into a useful information. And the useful information then appears on the dials in front of me, the sat-nav, the, uh, the rev counter, the speedo, the uh, multifunctional display on the RT as well. And then of course your experience uh, is then used to uh, make decisions. So the three steps are collect the data, synthesise it into information and then make your decisions based on that. So for me, what the, uh, what the triangle, the communications triangle does on the motorbike, it's designed to give us capability to make those decisions and nothing more than that and I don't want it to distract me I want it to provide useful information and I commented on earlier videos how even already the um, the, uh, the, the traffic um, monitoring uh, system from the Garmin app feeding into the uh, SatNav 6 has already saved me uh, sitting on a, a gridlock motorway so it, it's useful but uh, how do you get it all working well if I start with a phone the phone's probably the simplest thing so I've, I've got an Android phone uh, an LG phone uh, and once I bought the uh, the BMW SatNav 6, uh, the recommendation was to download the um, the Garmin app, which I did, and found that a pretty seamless process actually. So what the Garmin app does, it sits on your phone. Your phone's got the Bluetooth switched on, and the phone simply feeds uh, information, traffic information, and local weather information from the app into your sat nav and you can get that on the various screens and layers if you, if, if you want to uh, if you want to monitor that and of course the other thing the phone provides is phone calls now I, I must be honest I'm I'm not very keen at the moment on uh, making phone calls on a motorbike uh, nobody's ever rung me up yet on my mobile while I've been on it uh, would I be tempted to answer it I probably would be but I don't it's not something I probably want to make a habit of because um, there is a necessary level of distraction isn't there once you're on the phone so and I think the advice generally these days is pull over to the side of the road. So that's, that's I think that's probably what I would recommend. But the point is, is that the, the phone is connected to the, uh, the, the sat-nav. Now that brings me to the second item then, which is the Scala Rider QZ. So when I bought that, I, I, I was looking for a unit which was... I didn't want to pay too much money because it's the first time I've, uh, I've invested in one of these. So I went for a, a reasonably cost-effective one. I think the, the, the Scala Rider QZ was the... I think I paid about £80, something like that. Uh, so it was the cheapest of all the Scalas uh, and you can't talk to any other riders, you can't talk to a pillion all it essentially does is to connect you with the systems the systems on the bike and essentially that's what mine does so it, it now when you buy the Scala as well the, the big sales point is, is that they give you two Bluetooth channels and what they say is that you can connect one channel to your phone and one channel to your sat nav and if you connected a channel to your phone and you can access all the music on the phone as well as your phone calls 
and you can prioritise channel one and channel two to make sure which one sort of interrupts the other one when, when something's happening, like a, uh, a change of direction coming in on the sat nav, for example. Yeah, so for the life of me, with the Scala, uh, I just couldn't get it to work. It uh, kept dropping out channels, it was inconsistent, it would work for uh, five minutes and then it would stop working. So I contacted Scala via their website, um, asking for some technical support and they asked me to ring them up in America, so I live in the UK, they wanted me to make a transatlantic call which I guess was going to last 30 minutes so they could talk me through the process. So I could see myself on the end of a transatlantic phone call with my crash helmet in one hand, uh, sitting, on, sitting on the bike and trying to make the whole thing work. So. I wasn't happy with that, so I wrote back to them and said, please just send me a procedure, uh, and I'm still waiting for it. So I was very unhappy with that, I must be honest. Now, that said, what I then decided to do was to make the sat-nav the, the hub of the system. So I reset the Scala Rider QZ back to its factory settings, and I simply connected that to the, uh, the sat-nav. And again, you find instructions online how to do that, re re relatively straightforward. And uh, if I remember, I'll put some of those links. Uh, I'll put some of those links in the uh, in the comments section for you to see so you can pick up pick those up. So now my um, my sat nav is basically the king, and what I've done now is 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 that uh, my phone connects to my sat nav, and my sat nav connects to my helmet, and it works really well. So obviously, then you can't access the music from the phone. So the next uh, sort of techni technological challenge you've got is to uh, how are you going to listen to all your music well the uh, the simple way to do that is to buy yourself an SD card a micro SD card and then you go through a bit of a long-winded process of exporting all your right your music which most of them, I guess will have it on iTunes or something similar so you've got to export that from uh, first of all you've got to transform it from the uh, the iTunes format into I think it's mp3 A bit more buffeting here, interestingly, two lorries. Yeah, so you export that into MP3, and what I found the simplest way to do that was actually to set up a series of uh, dedicated uh, files on my computer and to create a playlist on the uh, iPad of music, say in this case opera, uh, it could be classical or dire straits or whatever is your cup of tea. So set your playlist up on iTunes uh, and then convert it, export it into a dedicated folder on your computer and then connect your um, SatNav 6 in my case to the uh, to the computer which will be recognised as a separate drive and then just simply just drag and drop them into the appropriate folder and I found that worked pretty well and then you got a little bit jiggery pokery just sort of setting up it setting it up as a playlist again I'll I'll put a, a little uh, explanatory video down on that, some, something that somebody else has done which I found very useful. And, uh, and that worked for me, so I've got about 10 playlists. So, like I say, so the music, I'm not, I'm not listening to music from my phone, all my music is actually now on the, uh, the SatNav 6. And that works very well. So, so for me, the Scala Rider QZ, if I sort of look at the pluses, it was cost effective. If you do what I've done, it's relatively easy to set up. Uh, if any of you've had success uh, working it with the two channels, I'd be interested, but personally I don't see what benefit that gives you, actually. Because uh, I think I can do everything now that I could have done with the two channels, but it's much simpler. Uh, the volume on the Scala Rider is very easy to change. Uh, you just sort of, you reach up and there are two very big buttons at the back of the unit. One at the top to increase the volume, one at the bottom to decrease the volume. Okay, the only little trick that I've learnt with the Scala is that if you have the Scala switched on and you approach the motorbike and then switch the sat-nav on, the sat-nav doesn't recognise it and therefore you cannot, um, you can't listen to your music for example. So the trick is that you always switch the Scala on last and then literally within 10 seconds the, uh, the sat-nav 6 will actually recognise it and I found that's worked actually pretty, pretty darn well so, so I'm really pleased with that. So into my capability now, that I'm listening as I'm riding along now, talking to you, I'm listening to some Italian chap singing his heart out with a bit of opera. That helps me to relax and ignites my brain. 
Okay, uh, I'm glancing down, I know I'm on the M69. Hang on the speed limit. Interesting, the, uh, the GPS tells me I'm doing a, a GPS 70, whereas the bike says I'm doing 73, so must be something to do with the size of the tyres or a slight bit of error built into the system. Okay, so I guess it's better that the, the bike's uh, speedo is, uh, is slightly uh, higher, isn't it, than, uh, than too low when you catch yourself uh, speeding. So for me, the, uh, the, the Scala works pretty well. You know, I've got to say, the battery life's worked pretty well. Um, I, I'm guessing it's lasting anywhere between sort of 15 and 20 hours, something like that. It's never run out on me yet, actually, so and I'm always cautious, so I, I tend to charge it up every week or so. So battery life's been very good. Uh, and it's just worked actually, so so very simple actually, so even for a, a new back to biker like me. I brought you back into the garage just for a few minutes, just because I wanted to show you the um, uh, what happens when you actually fit the um, uh, sat nav six in my case to the uh, to the bike, and actually the the change in the various displays actually. So if we just um, if we fire up the uh, the dials, and you can see here, which is what the uh, BMW calls the uh, the multifunction display. Yeah, with the multifunction display, using the the menu button, you can see as we as we cycle the menu button, we go through dynamic ESA, info, trip, uh, the handlebar heat, uh, the seat heat, uh, and then various uh, settings, and then, and then actually back to. Um, the, uh, the speed in miles per hour in, in my case so um, and if you press the diamond at the top of the diamond you, you, you can essentially set almost like a sort of a bookmarks or a favorite for sort of four or five different um, uh, sort of favorite screens that, that, that actually you may want now what I wanted to show you now was actually when you fit the um, uh, the actual sat nav 6 okay so let's just put the sat nav 6 on let's get it the right way around first of all that always helps so we put the sat nav 6 on and you'll notice the sat nav 6 boots up right so we've let the sat nav 6 come to life now if we now cycle through the uh, the menu dynamic ESA info trip navigation so you can see we've got we've actually got a new page there so we've got page we've got zoom plus we've got zoom minus uh, speak mute or display off if that's what we want so uh, so what the page button does, so again if we use the wonder wheel now, use the wonder wheel and if you look at the, uh, the sat nav, okay you see it moves from the, uh, the main um, sort of entry screen into the, into the map screen, moves on to the compass headings, moves on to a sort of a, an information screen with things like maximum speed, moving average, moving time and so forth. This I think is what replicates the sort of the screen that you've probably seen there, uh, you know, for any of you who've maybe owned a GS or, or, or seen the equivalent sc screen on the GS. Uh, and some RT riders have complained actually that this screen here doesn't contain uh, the same level of information as you can uh, get on the, on the GS screen. But, but actually what you find is the, screen, the, the information that doesn't appear on the sat nav there actually does appear, for example, things like uh, voltage levels uh, actually do appear or are configurable on the, on the multifunction display if you want it to appear there. So anyway, if we just keep cycling through with the, with the wonder wheel then, we actually come back to the, uh, the main screen. So just, just very quickly again, so there's the where to and view map screen. Just push the, the wonder wheel to the side, the, the map screen, the compass bearing, uh, the uh, sort of uh, multi-faceted information screen, and then back to the, uh, back, back to the where to screen. And you've got to remember, the last time I rode a bike, you know, back in 1980s, you wanted to make a phone call, you went to one of those big red boxes and put money in, and you hoped the person at the other end was there when you rang them up. And if you wanted to navigate, you stuck a road atlas in your pocket, and you pulled over frequently to check where you were going. And I think maybe now we've got a bit lazy with the sat nav, haven't we? But maybe they open up new fields for us. So for me, the, uh, that communications triangle is, provides me with a really useful capability. It's, um, it really helps me to ride. Um, I've got to say, it, um, you know, it just, just makes life easier. And uh, it's, it's certainly taken some of the thinking out of, away from me that, I've, that maybe I, I would have had to do and, and, and made life just that little bit more simple. So. I think that's worked reasonably well. Having said that, it was a major learning curve. 
and I hope this video is helpful to those of you who are coming back to the bike and maybe thinking about an RT and uh, how actually that's going to um, how that's going to work. But again, let me know in your comments if you're interested.